Hey fellow SweetScript developers, Eric from Stoic Software here again today. And in this video, we are going to investigate how to add dynamic links to a list of search results in a Sweetlet. Now, this was a new API for me, so it was uh, pretty cool and fun to learn just how easy this actually is. Um, it's very simple. So uh, before we get started, if you would like to become a competent and confident SweetScript developer yourself, then you can get started with my free email course on the best resources for learning SweetScript. You will find a link down at the top of the description. All right, let's get started. As a SweetScript developer, it is very common to get requests to for custom pages that somehow show different lists or, or search results. Uh, so NetSuite has created a few really convenient APIs to make displaying search results and working with them in Sweetlets pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, today we're going to look at one of those APIs for adding dynamic clickable links to our custom search result pages. Uh, we will use our previously established high priority cases Sweetlet that you see here as our starting point. So recall that this Sweetlet uh, looks at cases, current high priority cases currently assigned to the user. We, uh, our code runs a search and displays the search results in the list object. We've also added a button with a client script click handler to go to the next uh, case that's next in the priority list according to a saved search. Now what we want to do is add uh, links to directly to the search results so that we can click and go directly to each individual case uh, in the result list. So as always, the first thing we want to do is update our repository and create our new feature branch. Now that we have created our feature branch, we are ready to get started. So the first step in adding a link column to our list is to add a new column. And the type we're going to use, the field type, is actually going to be URL. So there is our new column. We've given it an ID of record URL. The field type is URL, which will make NetSuite render it as a clickable link. <clears throat> And the text of the link will actually come from our uh, the data set that we're using to populate the rows. And remember that we are passing our search results through this result to object method. And so that is where uh, the list gets its data. So we need to add a record URL uh, property here that will set the text of the link that gets generated. In this case, I just want to fix the text. It will be view for every uh, search result. It won't be dynamic per search result. We'll just make it say view like a lot of other NetSuite lists and search result lists do natively. And we need to generate a URL, uh, you know, our list needs to know which URL to send us to for each search result. We're going to need a function that generates the base URL uh, for each search result. So let's add that. Now we can use the n slash URL module to generate URLs for records, which is what we want to do in this case. We need to generate a URL for a case record so that we can link to one. So we need to first import the n slash URL module. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have imported the n slash URL module as URL. 
Now we want to use the URL modules resolve record method as we have used uh, previously in our client script video to generate the base URL for case records. And because I don't remember off the top of my head, let's go find that. And we don't, at the time we're running this function, we don't necessarily know the record ID. And so all we're going to specify is the record type. And what resolve record will do when, when there's no ID given, it will generate uh, the URL for a new case, for creating a new case. And that is fine for now. So we specify the record type option of resolve record. So we are generating the URL. We have added a column to hold the URL, but we haven't set the value anywhere. So how do we do that? How do we connect the column to the actual URL? So all of our columns are instances of the server widget modules list column object. Let's go look at the members of that object type. We can see right away the two methods in here pertain to setting and manipulating URLs. And so we're going to use these two methods. And we're going to start by using set URL. This sets the base URL for the list column. And we pass it a URL parameter. It tells uh, NetSuite which link or what address to link to. We're going to add this, add a call to set URL and specify a URL uh, property that uses our get base URL function. So we, on our URL column, we add a set URL call. We use the get base URL to generate that. So at this point, we should have a new case link column. We have it uh, connecting to a URL, which is the base URL for a new support case. And the text of our URL should be, or our link rather, should be view. So at this point, let's test all this out. It's not quite fully functional yet, but uh, let's just make sure we're working up to this point. Okay, so now we have our new column titled case link, and we have a link that says view in each column. It is a clickable link. If we look down at the bottom left there, we can see the link being generated does go to support case, uh, the support case page. Let's see what happens. And we can see that it has taken me to uh, the entry form for a new case. Now, that's not quite what we want. We actually want this to link directly to the search result for this row. And that is where the second uh, method on the list column comes in. Let's go back and then we look at this add param to URL. And the only difference between the URL for creating a new case and the URL for viewing an existing case is an ID parameter in the URL. So what we need to do is add a parameter named ID to our URL and set its value as the internal ID of the case we want to look at. We have three properties that we can pass in to add param to URL. We pass the name of the param, we pass its value, and what we can actually do with this method, with this dynamic switch, is dynamically calculate the value 
uh, based on the data set, based on the search results that we're passing in. So we're gonna we're going to set dynamic to true because our parameter is going to vary uh, for each search result. The base URL did not vary, but the parameter will. So let's leverage add param to URL in our code. Notice that set URL actually returns a reference to the list column object itself. So we are able to chain all of these methods together. Add column, set URL, add param to URL can all be chained together. Now the param name, as I said before, is ID. And we need to set its value which needs to be dynamic uh, to the internal ID of each search result. And so what we're gonna do is add a property to our data set for uh, the internal ID of each result. So we have a property now in our data set named internal ID and we just grab the ID property off of the search result. So now we want our uh, URL parameter to read this uh, internal ID property out of our data set. And to do that, we need two things. First, we need to just set the value property. to the name of the data set property that we want it to read. Now, if we just left it like this, uh, NetSuite would hard code, the, the, it would set all of the ID parameters for every search result to the string, the text, internal ID. And that's not what we want. And that is where that dynamic switch comes in. By specifying dynamic to true in add param to URL, that tells NetSuite, instead of using this uh, raw value, go look for a property in the data set with this name. So at this point, we should have a URL being dynamically generated that will uh, view the case for each search that each search result represents. And let's make sure I'm actually right about that. Okay, nothing different in terms of looks, but if we hover over the view link and we look down one, we can already tell it's working because the quick view is actually working, uh, which is pretty cool. We didn't have to add any special code. NetSuite just recognizes that, oh, this is a link to a record in NetSuite, so I can show the quick view for that. Um, but more importantly, just to show that our um, set uh, or add param to URL method is working, if we look down at the bottom left at our URL again, now we can see at the end, there is an ID parameter in the URL that matches the, and the value matches the internal ID uh, from each case. Okay, so we click that, make sure it actually does work. And that took us to case number 68. Go back, uh, here's case number 100. Let's view that one. That took us to case number 100. And so we have added dynamically generated links to our suitelet. One more thing we can do, maybe we don't want this separate uh, link field like this. Maybe we want the case number just to be the clickable portion. How would we do that? Well, remember that the URL column gets its text value from the data set. And so what we actually will end up doing is removing 
the case number field altogether. We just need our record URL column. We're going to change its name to case number because the case number text is actually what's going to show up in the column. We leave it as the type URL. The ID is record URL. So if we come down here, I don't need the view text anymore. We'll get rid of that. But I'm going to take where we're reading the case number and I'm going to switch that to record URL. So the value of record URL is mapping to the case number field from the search results. That is where the URL field will pull its text from. So whatever's stored in the case number will be used as the text for the link. And now our view column is gone and we've replaced it with just the case number and the case number appears to be clickable. Our quick view is working as well. So everything is fully functional. And that is how you add dynamic links to your Sweetlet search result lists. That is it for this lesson. If you liked what you saw in this video, hit that thumbs up button, go share what you learned with somebody else. You can click subscribe to keep up with all of my videos and become a competent, confident SweetScript developer yourself. Thanks for watching. Keep learning, keep sharing, and I'll see you next time.